Hello everyone, I am Ganesh Shindye from Plant Science Simplified. Today we will deal with the mycology topic. In today's topic, let us study cellular organization of the fungi as a salient feature of them. Kingdom Mycota to which the fungi belongs to are eukaryotic organisms and they show all the eukaryotic characters which are required by a cell to show cell to function properly and let us look on those aspects one by one. The first eukaryotic character in the fungi is membrane bound nuclei containing several chromosomes as we know that both membrane bound nuclei and chromosomes are the eukaryotic characters which are lacking in prokaryotes so it is to substantiate that fungi belongs to eukaryotes and there is one more interesting fact about fungi compared to other eukaryotic organisms that means under eukaryotes we will come across mycota plantae animalia so comparing to plantae and animalia where during the mitosis what happens the nuclear membrane so it dissolves first then the chromosomes will come to the cytoplasm then they are doubling uh, sorry uh, segregation or uh, yeah segregation or uh, other processes of the mitosis will begin whereas in fungi the nuclear membrane will be intact so that is very interesting and this is its unique character also the second very important aspect is all the organelles which are there in the fungal cells are membrane bound in nature which is a typical eukaryotic character so we can see membrane bound vacuoles membrane bound cell membrane uh, the cell organelles like uh, mitochondria uh, other plastids so all those aspects are there in the fungi the third very Important aspect we can observe within the fungi is cytoplasmic streaming. What is cytoplasmic streaming? As we know that the cytosol, which is the matrix inside the cell, uh, uh, which contains all other aspects, the all the reactions, biochemical reactions will take place in that particular thing. So it keeps on fluxing fluctuate keeps on moving from one cell to one cell one region to one region one compartment of the hyphae to one another compartment of the hyphae and this is very unique phenomenon which we can observe usually in filamentous forms so even in the filamentous algae we can come across cytoplasmic streaming in the same way here also we can observe in fungi filamentous fungi we can observe the cytoplasmic streaming the next very unique character is DNA that contains non-coding regions termed as introns. So DNA is segment. So introns and exons are the coding and non-coding regions. Especially when the mRNA, the translation takes place. So transcription takes place. The DNA reads a length of the uh, DNA will get into mRNA but the mRNA undergoes processing. Processing involves excision of the introns that they are, which are the non-coding regions. So the same phenomenon will occur in fungi. So it is evidence that eukaryotic nature of the fungal cells. And we can also observe membranes that are typically containing sterols. So this is very unique nature because the sterols different uh, maybe in our animal animals cholesterols will be there in plants different phytosterols will be there and in um, fungi we can come across ergosterol 
And these three unique type of sterols, in all the eukaryotes we can see the sterols, but the uniqueness of the sterols, they make them distinct and it tells that the three distinct kingdoms have taken three distinct evolutionary paths before they have become multicellular. So very interesting, see, the presence of chemical nature of the sterols also can be a evolutionary significance, evolutionary selection pressure for particular type of organisms. And we can, we can also observe that ribosomes of 80S type which are unique in nature and a 70s is the usual uh, ribosome type in prokaryotes and 80s is the eukaryotic ribosome type so along with that we have to study the fungal cell wall components which are of distinct nature and chitin and glucans are the typical wall materials which we can see in the fungi so chitin and glucans whereas cellulose which is a very important wall material in plants can be seen only in primitive fungi. So among eukaryotes we know that only fungi and plants will have cell walls, animalia are devoid of cell walls. Among them within these two categories the distinct cell walls can be seen. So there is a class in fungi which uh, earlier classification used to tell that um, uh, slime molds they don't have cell wall in their vegetative phase but overall a overview with they have cell walls and when it comes to the reserve food materials and uh, soluble uh, carbohydrates that means the translocating uh, food or uh, translocating compounds with respect to the fungi mannitol and other sugar alcohols will have major role to play and trihalose and glycogen will act as a reserve food material in the fungi whereas glycogen is the reserve food material in animal animals and cell, the starch is reserve food material in plants so here fungi since it it is a distinct though it maintains certain similarities between animals and plants. That's why for many years scientists were not able to place them properly and they used to study, used to place them along with the plants. So just they are plant-like though they behaviorally, they physiologically they more likely towards the animals. When it comes to the fungal genetics as we can study the fungal genetics shows haploid nuclei the typically haploid nucleus though single nuclei a nucleus is haploid but usually the fungi will have several nuclei within each septa so multinucleate condition or binucleate condition these are the usual conditions what we can see and which gives a uh, new dimension for fungal genetics and some budding yeast are deployed in nature so they can be deployed also but it is very uh, rare so with this we have concluded the cellular organization of the fungi and i hope this particular lecture was useful to you if you like my lectures, like it, share it, subscribe it. Thank you.